imagine this. Um, imagine that the Minister of Health announces a new plan. From now on, hospitals may employ psychics, or paragnosten, as we call them in Holland. But it's on two conditions. The first condition is the patient has to be really very seriously ill, in fact, fatally ill. And the second condition is all other uh, regular methods must have been tried and must have failed. And the minister says, well, I know it's a bit unorthodox, but I really want to try everything to give patients hope. Uh, well, you may think this is bullshit, but this is what actually happens with the Dutch police force. Uh, in December, our Minister of Security and Justice, Ivo Opstelte, uh, wrote a letter to the parliament, the Dutch parliament, and he said, from now on, the Dutch police may employ uh, psychics or paragnosten on two conditions. It has to be a very serious crime, for instance, murder or rape, and second, all regular uh, police methods must have failed. And he said, well, I realize this is a bit unorthodox, but um, I really want to give victims and their family every hope I can. And I'm not making this up, this, is, this, is, this truly happened. Um, and I talked about this with a, with a homicide detective a few months ago, and she was very angry about that. She said, it's a complete waste of time. Psychics have never, ever solved a crime. It's impossible, of course, because they're frauds. But what's even worse is we're giving people false hope. Sometimes there's nothing we can do. We have tried everything and we can't find the killer, we, we can't find the body, and we have to tell that to the, to the family. It's very, very difficult to have those conversations. And it doesn't help at all that the minister then says, well, maybe we can employ a psychic. He has a magic crystal ball and maybe we could give him a try. And this is an example of what I would call the, the security myth, as the title of my book. And it's the belief that politicians should do everything, really everything, to give voters a sense of security and a sense of safety, even if it's bullshit and if it's totally ineffective. Um, I could go on for hours about that, but I'll give uh, three examples. The most notorious example is, I think, uh, the war on drugs. Richard Nixon started that 40 years ago. Uh, millions and millions and millions of people have been incarcerated. Thousands of people have been shot dead, especially in Mexico and Honduras and Colombia. And it's a complete waste because there is more drugs produced than ever before. There are more drug users than ever before. So it's, it's a complete futile attempt. Um, the second example of this belief in, in security is politicians talking tough about uh, high sentences because a lot of people think that if you give high sentences, put people in jail for many years, that will scare them off. It doesn't work that way. We know that. That's a fact. Even the death penalty is not a deterrent, but still we keep going on with that message. And the third uh, popular myth is that more blue on the streets uh, is an effective method to fight crime which is not true. Every police expert knows this. Every police chief knows this. It's not an effective way to fight crime. And still politicians keep promising us we, we, we have to put more blue on the street. So it's, it's a very sad picture of, because, for instance, um, the war on drugs takes about half of all the effort of police and the Justice Department. Half of the jails are fi filled with people who have committed a drug-related crime. So it's a huge waste of time, uh, a huge waste of money, and especially a waste of human lives. Um, there's, this is a TED talk, so I have to end in a positive way. Uh, what can we do about this? I think we can learn a lot from, from health, from medicine. Uh, in medicine, we try to, to use evidence-based medicine. Everything you do must be, uh, must be tested in a scientific way, and if it doesn't work, you have to ditch it and find something better. So what we need, is, I think, is, is evidence-based policing. There are some very promising experiments going on in England. For instance, um, criminals are randomly assigned to two groups. One group is traditionally jailed, and another group is treated and counseled, and they're just measuring the effects. It's, it's very rational. There's no moral or political uh, status about it, it's just the science, what works better. And I think that's a very promising idea. The second thing we can learn from, from health and from medicine is some compassion uh, with human beings. Uh, we don't treat uh, alcoholics as criminals, we treat them as patients, we don't treat uh, chain smokers as criminals, yet they are both addicted to hard drugs. But why do we keep treating people who are addicted to hard drugs as if they are criminals, they are patients as well? And I think the most important thing um, we can learn from, from, um, from, from health and from medicine 
is that we that we it's the first thing that every doctor learns is is the message uh, first do no harm you have to know what you're doing you have to know what you're talking about it has to be evidence based and if it's if it causes more damage than than it, than it solves problems you shouldn't do it so um, I think that's that's the most important message think before you do something and um, that's the reason why we don't use psychics in hospitals because we know that's a fraud and we know that that's it's a shame and, and I don't think these people belong in um, in police stations uh, either thank you very much <laughs>